Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. Happy St. Patty's Day. I don't have that good an accent, but... Uh, <laughs> Mine's awful. Well, you're a little Irish. But well, I, I'm a little bit... I, my, my grandmother's maiden name was McCarty, so that's as Irish as I claim to be. Well, I'm Welsh, and that's close enough. There you go. So there you go. But everybody's Irish on St. Patty's Day, right? That's what I think. And you have not only cooked a meal, yes. but you've, you've uh, brewed a beer to go with the meal to celebrate this occasion. What have we got here in front of us? In front of us, we've got corned beef and cabbage and, and Irish potatoes. So very traditional. Or as my grandmother used to say, arsh potatoes. Arsh. Which really confused me when I went to the store <laughs> looking for arsh potatoes. They're hard to find. <laughs> so corned beef, you've got a corned beef brisket. Where's the corn in corned beef? It's still on the shelf. The corn actually refers to the size of the salt grain. The, so in other words, you had a piece of salt, which is a salt crystal, which is about the same size as a piece of corn. Ah. That's my piece of salt, piece of corn, <laughs> the same size. And so it was, I don't know how that got started, but in antiquity it did. And so you had this thing called corned beef, which is really a brisket of beef. I assume you could use other cuts, but we use a brisket. Um, I made a brine, which we'll post onto our website. Yeah, all the details, um, all the fine details of the recipes will be in the description of this episode on basicbrewingvideo.com or in the app, if you have the app. That's right. Phone. So we make we made this brine. We let it soak in the brine for about five days. Now, what do, what do you put in the brine? Uh, I put salt. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you made it a special Irish brine. That's right. It's got two. There's one gallon of water or one gallon of liquid, but two pints of Irish, of uh, Guinness Stout. Mm. So, or actually two bottles, it's mm -hmm. actually two 12 ounce bottles. And then uh, up to one gallon of liquid with, with water to top that up, a cup and a half of kosher salt, half a cup of sugar, four tablespoons of pickling salt, some garlic powder, you got a brine. Mm -hmm. You soak your uh, brisket in that brine for five days. Now you did yours in a bag. Uh, brisket in a bag, that's what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> and. I did it in a bag so that I wouldn't have to worry about turning and flipping and, and uh, oxygen getting to it. Okay. So I, I put it all in a bag. I took all the oxygen out so there's no air bubbles or anything. I put all of that in another bag in case it leaked. I put all of that into like a Rubbermaid container, put that in the fridge, let it set for five days, and then took it out today and we did the boiled beef. So did I, you have to rinse the brine off? I rinsed the brine off. Um, I didn't like soak it to try to unbrine it. Right. But I, I gave it a light rinse just to kind of knock, you know, the heavy stuff off. And then when I made the cooking water to actually cook the beef, that whatever was left on that beef was the salt that, that was mm. in the in the dish. And then I added a little bit more pickling spice, a couple of tablespoons, a little more garlic powder, cooked it down. Boiled it all day. Boiled it all day, actually in the oven, because I, I didn't have time to stand and watch it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did it in the oven. Then uh, about an hour before the shoot, we did some new potatoes and some uh, cabbage and onions together in the cooking juice. And uh, that's the plate that's in front of us right now. And you use the broiler in the oven to kind of give some color and caramelization and some extra flavors uh, to the meat itself. Because yeah, frankly, boiled meat <laughs> it doesn't sound good by itself. There's a reason why the British Isles aren't known for their culinary. <laughs> Now, if you look at this beef, uh, you expect uh, corned beef to be pink. This That's is not right. Pink. It's not pink, and it's because I didn't use nitrite or, or pink salt. It's, a, it's called pink salt or pickling salt or just nitrite, uh, which gives the meat its kind of pinkish hue mm. that you see typically with corned beef. I opted not to do that. I certainly could have, uh, but at least in my house, we try to stay away from nitrite as much as we can, and so when I got ready to make this dish, I decided no nitrite. I didn't care whether it was pink or not. It doesn't matter to me. The flavor is still going to be great. And that's basically it. So, and, uh, you, and you also, you did double duty this week. You also brewed the beer. I did. I brewed this beer. This is a, I'm going to refer to my brewer's logbook. <laughs> Where would you get one of those? I'm not sure, but I think at basicbrewing.com. <laughs> I made uh, what I'm calling a robust porter, and that's my story, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> um, I made a smoked porter with ancho chilies. And this is, this is the beer, I'm anxious to see what you think about it. Um, again, we'll post the recipe online. 
Let's see how it smells. Oh, man. Mmm. Mmm. Smoky goodness. Wow. That's, I, I anticipate that that's going to go really well with the meat. Especially, I certainly hope so. Especially after you uh, did the little trick with the, uh, the broiler and yeah. caramelized the, the little the bit of fat on the top of the corned beef. Let's see how that I've bit of fat I've never had is. homemade corned beef. Well, I hope that you enjoy this. Let's just see how it is today. Is this your first, your first attempt? It is. <laughs> but I trust you. Mm. You are, oh my gosh, it's falling apart. Oh, my stars is so good, it makes you want to slap your mama. Mmm. <laughs> wow. That's good. You guys got to try this. Mmm. Now, got to try a little cabbage. Mm-hmm. Got to follow a little bit of Irish, Irish tradition. Mmm. Wow, the potatoes, the spice in there with the with the uh, the vegetables. Oh my gosh, very good. Mm. And the smoked beer. There's just a little bit of heat from the chilies mm -hmm. in the smoked beer, just enough to kind of cleanse the palate a little bit. Man, we didn't. Cheers. This is Boy, awesome. It is so good. That's just a. Oh, that's happening. Wow, very good. Oh my goodness. And we have plans for the corned beef. We do. For a future show. So stay tuned. <laughs> a little bit of a spoiler alert there. <laughs> now, uh, I don't miss the pinkish hue at all. Well, who would? <laughs> and this is, it, oh tastes, it tastes like corned beef. It's got kind of the texture of a, of a roast. Mm -hmm. um, so it, and, and it doesn't taste as chemically, sort of, as right. commercial corned beef. Uh, you get the commercial corned beef, and you boil the heck out of it, uh, and then you, you, know, you cut it up, and it's good. But, man, it's salty, and there's kind of a... There, there, there is a chemical character there's to it. There's a wang to it. Yeah. yeah. Now, this, this has the spices, but, like I said, it's, it's more kind of roast-like. It's very, very tender. Um, man. I'm spoiled for just like I'm spoiled for a, for a com commercial sauerkraut since I mm -hmm. make my own now. Mm -hmm. How could you how could you go back to a commercial corned beef after this? I don't know. I just think that anything that you can make yourself, mm -hmm. and you can make almost anything if you just put a little effort into it. Right. I, I you know I, I have to admit that I was always kind of intimidated by corned beef. I thought, oh my gosh, what is that? You know, and. Um, I don't know, I started thinking about it and thinking, why not? And I'm certain that, that some of our viewers have make their own corned beef and are probably better at it than I am, but this is wonderful. Yeah. And it was so easy to make. And I think that one of the great things about all of this is that once you kind of get brave, you, you find that you can kind of do anything yeah. you know, around the house like this. You can make your own corned beef, you can make your own sausage, you can make your own cheese, you can make your own beer which is what we're mostly about. But we're about all this other stuff too because mm -hmm. it all goes hand in hand. And what a great way to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Um, all I can say is uh, we've got a great beer here. We'll post the recipe online. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy brewing. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, extract brewing and partial mashing, stepping into all grain, low-tech lagering and decoction mashing, introduction to wine kits, and for a limited time, our 2012 Brewer's Logbook. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to james at basicbrewing.com, sieve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. Do you need a white spot? Use my legs. <laughs>